Probably spending like seven or eight million dollars. I want to give a hundred people a hundred thousand dollars. They go, you're crazy. I can't keep going. I don't recommend you guys try this. Jimmy Donaldson, AKA Mr. Beast, is by far the most dominant YouTuber on the planet. And somehow we got him to come on the Iced Coffee Hour for a one hour exclusive interview where he reveals unbelievable details on his business that have never been shared before. Beast Burger has done over a hundred million in sales. The main channel now, probably like three or four million a month. So if you're interested in this and wanna see more episodes like this, hey, you should subscribe right now because we have episodes coming out every single Sunday here on the Iced Coffee Hour. Thank you so much and on to the episode. But first we have to thank our sponsor of this episode, Epidemic Sound, the best tool for all creators to soundtrack their content. We use it, Mr. Beast uses it, and so many of your favorite creators do too. Epidemic is hands down the best tool for video creators to soundtrack and monetize their videos without receiving copyright strikes or worrying about takedowns. After all, if you want to make the best content, you have to have the best tools, and Epidemic Sounds has the best music and sound effects for your videos. We personally have been using Epidemic Sound for nearly two years now. If you don't believe us, go back to the second video we ever posted on this to family and check out the intro. And we've been using Epidemic Sound in almost every video since then because they've seriously been that good. And considering Epidemic's massive library of over 35,000 tracks and 90,000 sound effects, that's not just copyright free, but actually good. It's no surprise to us and so many other creators why it's the go-to music tool in video creation. All tracks are professionally produced by a diverse group of artists and exclusive to Epidemic Sound, meaning you can't get them anywhere else. Their personal plan is ideal for content creators as it covers most platforms, including YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and podcasts. And for all of you entrepreneurs out there, they also offer a commercial plan. It's the perfect choice for businesses, freelancers, and agencies to soundtrack their content. So be sure to check them out using the link down below in the description and additionally use the code TICH50 to receive a 30-day trial plus 50% off your next two months when signing up for a personal plan. I really believe you guys are going to enjoy it. And now with that said, let's get back to the podcast. Welcome back to Ice Coffee. I'm your host, Mr. Beast. These are some guests I brought on, and I'm going to be interviewing them to see how much money they make. How's it going, guys? Good. Good. Yeah. Guess how much we've made. Uh, on this channel? Yes. Uh, how many views? What is it? 33 million views. And what's the average length of the video? Uh, an about hour. an hour and a half. Okay, yeah. last question. How many mid-rolls do you do? Graham Quite likes to do one every like three, four minutes. <laughs> okay, three, four minutes. Yeah, no, and, we change it to like one and, every time. And it's categorized as a finance channel. Correct? Yes, education. Okay, so 30, I would say probably $11 RPM, so... Three, I would say 300 grand. That's so, that's, that that's is a, so close. That's the what most analytical answer we've ever yeah, seen. You'd be the closest. 252, there yeah. we go. A great answer. Yeah, yeah what do people because normally get? Some of those views are shorts. So actually, if oh, we take yes. out the that's shorts, you true. would have been I was spot lied on. to. What, yep. So it is yeah. around a $10 RPM? That's pretty much exactly what it is. Okay, is it actually right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very good. Because like, if you put like stock or like, S and P five hundred, you can get like twenty or twenty five dollars, mm -hmm. but I assume not every title is like perfect keywords. So some could be like six, but your better ones could be twelve and like the medium. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. seen for Shopify and Amazon FBA, it's about yeah. thirty to forty dollars. Exactly, RPAs. it gets freaking it's crazy. Insane. Some of the credit card videos I've done have been about that. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I it, I almost considered doing a finance channel at one point just because that. Like, <laughs> I gave uh, whatever, like all 10 people credit cards and then like check back six months later to see who has higher credit score, like things like that. Um, but I never ended up doing it because I was like, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were about to say who has the most debt. <laughs> yeah. Get well, just weird things like that, like applying our format to finance because it was like, I had that realization one day. I was like, I can make like eight times the money for the same views if I just revolved it around finance yeah. stuff. So what excites you the most for YouTube? What excites me the most? Oh gosh, just blanket YouTube? Yeah. Um, everything. I mean, what doesn't? You know, uploading videos, the, the creator economy, and just is growing, YouTube's growing, everything's growing. I mean, every part of it is great. Like the freedom you have to, to do whatever. YouTube is, like, name a better industry right now. Like, YouTube is just growing so much and I don't think it's gonna slow down. What excites you about it the most? So not necessarily YouTube, with, with the process of making videos, like, what do you get from it? <sighs> it's gonna sound weird, because I just said this, but, yeah. I mean, like, everything. Like, yeah. if money, make videos. Fame, make videos. Happiness, make videos. Um, kind of like everything in my life currently, that I want to improve kind of just revolves around just making videos. So the answer really is kind of everything for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if that's a cop out. It's good. How yeah. do you stay focused? For me, it's never really, that's never really been a thing. I just, it's almost, 
for uh, the problem I'm having right now is I struggle to wind down at night because I just work and work and I'll lay in bed and I'll think of ideas and I'll think of just like you know what we could have done better how we could edit a video better or finances or whatever so it's actually not even staying I'm a little too focused right now which is something I always have to correct myself because I usually go to bed at like 4 a.m. Mm. even though I get in bed at like 10 p.m. I'll sit there for like six hours on average right now so I'm trying to like actually find ways to like pull back a little bit and so I sleep a little bit better. When is the moment that you realize that you could turn this into a business? Oh gosh, that's a good question. So probably when I started making around twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month is when it kind of clicked in my head that um, you know I could hire someone for a couple grand and basically double my output because I was doing everything, right? I was like building whatever, like if I wanted to buy 5,000 plates and like throw it off a building and, and break them all, I'd have to order them all and I'd have to set them up, unpack them all and like build a contraption, uh, editing, camera, I was doing it all. I did that for first thousand videos and it kind of clicked in my head. I couldn't tell you which video. Maybe it was like how many rolls of duct tape does it take to stop a car or whatever, mm -hmm. but I was just like, wait a minute, if I just had a helper, I could do this two times faster, I could upload twice as much and if I'm doing you know, 20, 30 grand a month in revenue, and one person would double it, and you know, I could hire a person for like four or five grand, it's kind of a no-brainer. And so then I just brought on a guy to help me move boxes and just help with the simple stuff. And I was like, oh, well, now let me go hire an editor. And that was game changer, because uh, although that took a very long time, like a year plus to train, because it's very hard to find someone who understands your style. And then, and then I got a cameraman, and then just kind of snowballed from there. And then I just basically hired someone every month for the last like six years. What's been the most difficult part to outsource? The most difficult part to outsource? Everything. The channel is still my creative vision. It's like I'm the one who spent my entire life obsessing and building the brand and studying this and like so um, I, like even editing I still do like 10 revisions and I have a big hand in it and the writing of the videos and like how the videos I mean Almost, nothing's like truly outsourced because like you can't just like go, here's my band, here's kind of the videos I want, just give me a video every week. Like if, you know, because they haven't spent their entire lives obsessing over this, they don't know as much. So basically everything. Have you ever had to fire anybody before? Of course, yeah. It's oh. never fun, but you know, usually what happens is like you bring them on um, for something you think you need and it's like, oh, we're going this path and we're going to do videos where we... I don't know, like donate to Twitch streamers or easier runs. And then next thing you know, you're doing Squid Game level videos. And mm -hmm. those, you know, are a little bit outside their skill set or whatever, because we're just changing so much. It's kind of hard to predict what we need. But I mean, turnover happens everywhere. It's, it's just kind of part of it. Have you personally fired people? And how does that process go? Do you have someone else doing it? Well, now we have HR, so obviously yeah. I don't have to handle it. But yeah, back in the day, usually it's, I like to see it more as helping them transition to other companies. Like sometimes, you know, we had one person who, we moved out here and, and it didn't end up working out. And so, I, you know, I was just like, what do you want to go do? Is there a different YouTuber you want to work for? And I just DM'd a bunch of other YouTubers, helped them get a job. Yeah. It just kind of depends. Sometimes they want to go work for other YouTubers and I help them. Or sometimes, what was it? One guy, we wanted, he wanted to go work for Tyler, the creator. And so I was, I was like, I tried. <laughs> I tried to get Tyler, the creator. Oh so I could be like, hey, this guy, I vouch, he's, he's pretty good. Um, so I, I like to see it more as like helping them transition to like, whatever, their next career. Because like, cool. there's no hard feelings. Whether you're here or somewhere else, I want them to be happy. So I try to set them up for success and just do whatever I can to you know, pay them back for what they invest in my company. That's cool. How many hours do you work in a day? Depends what you classify as work. <laughs> the answer could be every hour I'm awake if just laying in bed thinking about YouTube is work. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. or every, so just about, I would say since I was 11 years old, almost every waking hour of the day, I'm thinking of YouTube in some form or capacity, basically. Why do you think you have such that level of focus? Just because that's what I love. I feel like it was almost like baked in my DNA. Like it yeah. just flows in my blood, the, the innate urge to create videos and to build a YouTube channel and build businesses. It's just, that's just what I do. And if I like, try to take time off, I just get depressed and I, mm. I feel like I lose my sanity. But I also feel like I lose my sanity because we've cranked the treadmill so much on creating videos. So it's like weird, but if I'm not creating, then I don't feel fulfilled. I don't feel like I'm progressing. Then I feel like I'm wasting my time. And like, am, am I allowed to swear? Yeah. Yeah, I just kind of feel like a waste of space, like a piece of shit if I'm not like yeah. making videos, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's interesting. I feel the exact same way. Yeah. Not necessarily with the making videos, but if I'm not working towards something or working on something, I feel terrible. Exactly. Like I have low energy. I just want to sleep. I don't want to do anything. I feel sad. But when you're in the zone, uh, what do they call it? Um, when you're in the zone. Yeah. Oh, 
it's it's uh, being in the flow state. Yeah. When you're in that state where like time seems as though it's stopped entirely yes. and like a, a day went by. That's what I love. And there's yeah. something about that that opens up like some sort of creativity that most people don't get until they're in that place. Agreed. Do you know how many income sources you have? That's an interesting one. Well, let's see. We have Beast Burger, uh, Feastables. We have a, a company where we dub channels, which runs our Mr. Beast Espanol and stuff like that. We do that for other people. We have Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast Gaming, Beast Reacts. I mean, would you count Mr. Beast Espanol? Mm -hmm. Okay, well then Mr. Beast Espanol, Mr. Beast... Uh... <laughs> How many languages are there? Well, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> to summarize all the languages. Okay, well, they're all, right. all the languages, which okay. there's like 20 of those. Um, and then, which, and they're starting to do more views than my English channels, which is crazy. Wow, yeah. Um, and what else do we have going on? Merch? I feel like, yeah, merch is another one. It's kind of hard. I kind of forget the stuff we're doing. Uh, I'd ha Honestly, I'd have to like open my bank account <laughs> and look through it. Because like, there's also like sub opportunities like we occasionally do things where like we built this app where uh we had people put their finger on the it's app not, yeah. yeah so we're building other apps in the future so probably somewhere around 10. what would you say your main source of income is if you're to pick one oh, thing gosh. what but see the problem yeah. is like what does income even mean like i don't i don't really make money i just reinvest it all so it's like which one and also, are yeah. we talking gross or are we talking profits? Because if it's gross, it's Beast Burger. Beast Burger is absolutely crushing it, but it's food, so the margins aren't as good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas like Feastables, be, um, the margins are a lot better, especially because we do a lot of sales D to C online, mm -hmm. so it's just higher. Merch, the best margins, but we, you know, it's you just like a burger or whatever. You know, it's something someone can order multiple times a week. Merch, someone going to buy like twice a year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What about sponsorships? Oh yeah, and sponsorships. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah, those have gotten crazy recently. Um, well, I would say so again. Gross or profit? Or well, I we think don't we should even really discuss profit. both in all issues. Yeah. Issues, so but. gross, I guess, would be Beast Burger. I mean, yeah, Beast. I, I here. I, was, yeah. I recently tweeted, so I'll yeah. say this because I tweeted. You can throw it up. That uh, Beast Burger has done over 100 million in sales. Wow. Um, and obviously that number has grown a lot bigger since then. So like, but again, it's because it's something people can repeatedly buy. Mm -hmm. um, and then. But actual money, I guess, would be brand deal slash ad revenue. Well, I, well, if you include all the channels, then yeah, yeah it's definitely ad revenue. <laughs> Could you walk us through a, a normal day? Like from yes. wake up, like what does a day look like? There's you? no such thing as a normal day, but I can pick some random days in the last month. Um, so like, or actually, here's some of our days coming up. So one of our videos coming up, we're going to spend um, a night in a $1 hotel and then a, like a $1,000 hotel, $10,000, $50,000, 100000 200000 500 up to a million. So, for example, next week I'm going to be flying to India to stay in like a one dollar hotel, and then like a ten thousand dollar hotel in the Maldives, and then we're going to like uh, just whatever. We're, we're going to be traveling all over the world. I'm going to be mm -hmm. doing that for two weeks, and then when I get back, well, that means gaming and reacts fall behind. So I'm going to have to do a whole day of catching up on our reacts videos. And I'm going to have to do a day or two catching up on our gaming videos, and then I've been gone. So now I got to spend a whole day catching up on the creative and all our other main channel videos, and then. The video after that, we're gonna do like the world's largest experiments. Like we're trying to make the world's largest balloon, world's largest paper airplane. So then go work on that, and I'm probably gonna go film a couple of those, and then come back, and you know, and then you Beast Burger and Feastables are probably gonna want my head on a platter because I just spent two weeks traveling filming that video, and I haven't been talking to them as much. So then probably those meetings will probably fly into town, and then we have other companies. So it's kind of ebbs and flow. The main channel is the priority, and then around the main channel schedule, the rest of my life kind of like forms with all the other businesses. Do you have any sort of daily routine though, like every morning? No. I mean, like I'm gonna be gone for two weeks, yeah. and then when I get back, I'm it, like, I'm doing the experiments, and we're, you know, then I gotta play makeup on all the other companies, and then after that, I'm, I gotta go to the, I can't say where, because I might spoil it, but I gotta yeah. go somewhere else for a video. And then it's just different. And then next thing you know, I'm burying myself alive for 100 hours or whatever. And then that throws off it. And you know, sometimes I sleep here. Sometimes if I'm on the other side of the town working at the other studio, I sleep at that studio. It's like kind of hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who keeps track of your schedule? Uh, Steel. You met him. Yeah. Yeah. So I basically, I tell every, whenever I want to do something, I'm like, hey, I need to meet with so-and-so tomorrow. I need to do this. He compiles it. And then every day just makes a prior list. And then he just, we like to call it, like a uh, block calling, like if I have calls, mm -hmm. like so today, if I have like six calls, instead of doing a call at one, a call at three, a call at like five or a call at eight, I like to just do them back to back to back. So like, like do a call at one and then have the other four on standby. And the second I finish that one, I jump on the next one at like 115. And then mm -hmm. I jump on the next one, 135. And so then it's much easier if the calls are stacked like that instead of like, oh, I got a call in 10 minutes and then waiting for the call and that kind of stuff. So 
Um, I don't even know where I'm going with it, but I basically wake up and he has, I dump all my stuff I need to do and then he just kind of schedules and prios it on whatever is most important for the business and then I just wake up and do what he tells me. How far ahead are you planned on that? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, I mean, my calendar yeah. is out till the end of the year, um, but. What are you doing three weeks from today? We're going to be making the world's largest burger. That's crazy you have it planned out like that. Yeah. I know everything, every video we're filming on the main channel between now and the end of the year, we have. Because they're big projects. So if we're yeah. going to film a video in December, we got to start working on it now. So yeah. we're very far ahead. Where would you say you spend most of your time? Is it filming, planning, scripting? That's the problem, man. And that's why I wouldn't recommend someone do what I do because it's stressful. It just depends. Yeah. And, you know, if we do a gaming video where I survive 100 days of Minecraft, that's, what is that, like 30 hours in real time? So, because like a Minecraft day is 20 minutes. So like I could spend 30 hours playing Minecraft and then, you know, the next week I'm building the world's largest firework and I have to spend a week on that. And the next, you know, I got to go network or go to a conference. It's, it is so sporadic and random, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. But I guess for the most part, it's filming main channel videos. But those are just, they're different. Everyone's different. Yeah. I'm either in a submarine or climbing Mount Everest or uh, putting 100 people in a circle and see who leaves last. Yeah. I've been so curious. Could you walk us through the process of creating a video from start to finish? How do oh you think of ideas? Where yeah. does that start? So um, I work very well off of inspiration. So I used to just like flip through a dictionary. I've told these stories yeah. before, random word generators, blah, blah, blah. Recently, I hired a bunch of people to just come up with interesting things or find things to inspire me. Like, let's say um, in Japan, there's this like yellow fruit that if you ate it, just like made you jump 10 feet taller, right? You don't know that exists. Let's say it does exist, but you don't know. So you couldn't come up with a video idea around eating that fruit because you don't know it's a thing. Mm. And so I think a big part of coming up with ideas, which again, this, I could give you the five hour explanation of how to do, we do our videos or like the shorter ones, so I'm giving you the mile high. Okay. But for starters, I need as much, and I need to, I call it like an information diet, it might be a little cringe to call it that, but yeah. like my well of knowledge needs to constantly be expanding so I have more things to draw inspiration from from our ideas. If not, you're gonna get the same ideas over and over again. So it happens for a lot of creators, that's why their videos are repetitive and always the same thing, because if you're not constantly learning new things, then your ideas are just limited to what's in your head and eventually you're gonna drain it. That's how I've seen it, it's yeah. not so linear. Point is, I need to always be getting taking things. So I have a team of people who are just helping just dump and beat new things in my head so I can get inspired. We do that, we come up with a good idea, and then from there, we, um, oh gosh. Well, then now we gotta write the video, so I usually work with Tyler. Uh, and how, yeah, have you found a process for scripting that you think, like, this format works, and no, how do you? The problem is our yeah. videos aren't scripted, and yeah. B, every video is different, so like, um, so we'll, we'll do the hotel one. Problem with hotel one, you can't really, like, plan what you're gonna do or plan shots, because you don't know what the hotels are. So then, you know, you kind of have to go then basically scrape every hotel in the world above a certain price point. So like we need, we know we want to do $1 versus a million. So, you know, well, $1 hotel is very hard to find. So we, it's not like there's a website and you can't just Google it. So we had to like basically search all these hotels and like, you know, Airbnbs and house, there's like shared housing where you could get it down, which is how we got it. And then you got to find every $100 hotel and find the coolest one in the world and then all the $10,000 ones. And now you have them all. And then now you can go look at it creatively and camera wise. And then you're like, oh, these aren't cool enough. These aren't cool enough. And it's like a lot of back and forth. And then, you know, you kind of plan it out, if that makes any sense. And then, yeah. oh, well, we need to film this two week window, but five of these aren't available. Now you got to go back to the drawing board and find all new ones and then, you know, map out a path so you can fly around the world and it doesn't take like a month, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. And then what about the filming process going to editing? Yes. Well, that's where it gets crazy because, so you're using three cameras here. Well, I'll use boys versus girls, for example. I think we use, we put 100 boys in a circle, 100 girls in a circle. I think we used 60 cameras on that video, which was wild. So we had 60 cameras running for 100 hours because it was a 100 hour challenge. Um, because we had to have cameras monitoring the red lines, every inch of it, mm. or if someone stepped out, we couldn't show it, like 10 wides and then all the uh, free roaming ones. And so <laughs> we have a DIT who kind of like labels them all like this camera, and then we take notes while we're filming. So if I mm. see something funny, I'll be like, hey, this time, because you can look at the time code, like yeah. this happened and this happened, like during this time lapse. Um, like one time we had like someone standing in the trash can and then it fell over and they touched the line and got out. Well, because we have so many cameras and so much time lapse and the editor can't watch every footage, every minute of footage, you have to like write that down so they can like go look at the time lapse, find that and put it in or 
it'll just get lost in the abyss. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. How many hours would you say it takes to edit the average video? Um, hours. So our 100 million subscriber special, I think we were just doing the math. I think it was like collectively like 1,700 hours across all the editors. But that was that was a really, really big video. Yeah. But because yeah, we had to pull in a lot of firepower for that video. Yeah. We used a lot of cameras, and I was very particular on how I wanted it. So we did so many revisions. Yeah. Like they would, The thing is, like I'm, the, I'm not the easiest to work with in that regard. Like I really want to make the video as good as possible. And so sometimes, you know, we'll edit a video a certain way, and then, you know, um, we'll just be like, well, what if we try this? And so we'll have to like basically re-edit the video to see if this other way produces a better story and if it flows better. And then we'll be like, oh, that, that's not as good. And then you go back to this one. And then we try this. And it's a lot of testing. So we usually edit a video like you know, five or seven times. How many eyeballs look at that video before you get to see it? Because yeah. I'd imagine they show you a version that's close maybe to what's well, going to post. close to done. Yeah. And then I see it, and it's not close to done. Okay. But, yeah, so it's usually um, just a, wh whichever person's editing it, and then Mario, um, the guy, our retention guy, who just, this is kind of the obvious stuff, because like, there are a lot of, the thing is, I've, you know, we've done tons of videos, yeah. countless, especially across all the channels, like thousands of videos at this point. There are just a lot of things, like, I just don't want to have to keep repeating myself of like certain, like, obviously, you know, this wasn't fast enough, or this didn't flow well, or like kind of the obvious stuff. When I give notes, I want to, and work on the edit, I want to actually do high level things and not be like, oh, just the color here was off, or obvious things like that, it's just kind of a waste of time, yeah. you know what I mean? How many hours go into a title thumbnail? That's something that, for yes. me, I could sometimes spend days on a yes. title and thumbnail. Well, once we pick it, not as many. Okay. Um, but the, it's all in the front end. Like picking the idea is like brutal. And I mean, I couldn't tell you hundreds probably. Um, and then uh, here, let me show you this. Yeah. So every thumbnail we do, we actually do like seven versions of. It's so, like this is for boys versus girls, or 100 boys versus 100 girls. This is like our upcoming video, like two different ones. Uh, this is for the 100 million subscriber video. Uh, so the thumbnail we ended up going with was A1, yeah. but these were our backup options. Wow. Now, A2, is that just a storyboard to kind of give the idea? Because that doesn't look like it would be the final thing, right? Yeah, these are all storyboards. Oh, wow. Like, this was a storyboard for the final product. Yeah. I mean, and if we d went with the house, because there was a house on the island, we would have just, like, gone there, shot source, and, and recreated it. And then we had an idea of me like being in a boat driving away from the island as the thumbnail. Yeah. This might sound silly. Do you take the same picture and reuse it, or do you take a new thumbnail every time? Of my face? Yeah. Oh, we have probably a thousand different photos really? of my face. Yeah. The interesting thing is I recently cut my hair very short yeah. um, <laughs> in a video because I failed a challenge. And then we went to make a thumbnail the next video, and it just didn't look like me. Yeah. Like, because a lot of people just recognize me for having bangs. So even though I have short hair, my thumbnails still have me with long hair because yeah. more people recognize it. Um, and I thought that was funny. I think that's cool. Uh, do you ever take days off? Yeah, of course. The thing, so the way I like to work, and I don't recommend you guys try this. Uh, it's, so schedules don't really work well for me. I like, I'm in the zone and I like to go hard. I'm very obsessive. I don't, I like to just give in to my net. A lot of people will work five days a week and they won't work weekends and ambitious people will try to like restrain themselves and be like, you know, this is a schedule, can't work mm -hmm. Saturday, can't work Sunday. I, uh, that just never works for me. I always end up caving. So I found giving into my natural instinct works best. So I just work every day, every hour of the day um, until I just burn out. So like I'll work all day Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I'll keep going. And then usually around day 10, I'll wake up and I'm just like burnt. I'm like, I can't keep going. It's too much. Like I can't keep doing these like 12, 15 hour days. And then I'll take like half a day or maybe a day, depending on how severe it is. And I'll just chill. And I'll just kind of like nuke my calendar. Mm. And then by the next day I'm fired up and I'm ready to go. And then I just do it again. And so it's weird. But that's what works really, really well for me. Anytime I try to stick to a schedule, it just doesn't work. Because there are certain Saturdays I'm just fired up, and like God himself couldn't stop me from going and working yeah. on a video. And then there are other Saturdays where I'm burnt out. And so, yeah, I just, I just kind of give in to my emotions and just work when I want to, which is usually like seven to 10 days in a row, and then just like take a little break till I'm ready, which is usually like half a day or a day. That's really cool. How many people work for you? Oof, loaded question. Um, do we count the people working in the Beast Burger restaurants or no? No. Okay. I would say just here. 
Because it okay. seems like I, I've met a lot of people from your team. Yeah, and well, that number's a little classified. So involved. Okay. It's, it's getting big. Um, it's definitely getting big. I, I'd say in general, right, between Feastables and all the stuff we're doing, like full-time salary, probably 150 people, maybe maybe 200, just kind of depends. So a lot of, like, part-time jobs and second-hand jobs that are spun off, and that's where it gets into, like, the hundreds, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you be able to draw a flow chart for us in terms of you at the top yeah. controlling everything? Who's underneath you? Who's underneath them? The only what? problem is if I did that, there are tons of people that just copy everything I'm doing on YouTube yeah. currently. Like I breathe and like 30 <laughs> other channels try to do it. And I don't want, uh, and I say this about That's ideas, fair, yeah. don't copy me, yeah. but they do it anyways. Yeah. If I did that, all these YouTubers would start trying to clone it and then they're just going to become mini me's. That's and fair. it's like a lot of people for some reason have stopped taking inspiration and doing their own twists, and they just literally flat out copy what I do. Um, and so I'm, that's why I'm like, say, when I, you know, when you ask about people or stuff mm -hmm. like that, I try not to say too much, because I know hundreds of creators are just gonna be like, that's it, that's what I'm doing. I need 50 people, I'm gonna build it like this, and then I'm gonna do what <laughs> Mr. Beast does, you know? <laughs> yeah. But you would employ a lot of people that way. If all of a sudden the unemployment rate goes to like 1% because everyone's hiring. Yeah, true. But the big funny, thing yeah. is you need a production department to make the ideas happen. You need creative people to think on it. Obviously camera and editing. is you know Those are your, your big four. How do you think the money is best spent for the channel in terms of growth? Yes. Okay. How do I think it's best spent? Just making the best YouTube videos possible. I mean, if we want to sell more Feastables bars or merch or get better brand deals, it all literally just stems around you know, yeah. people watching the videos, which is... Does that go back then to more idea creation, or do you think it's higher retention, so better specialists, yeah. or, or I no, guess it's more not involved? That kind of yeah, stuff. okay. It's it's more, like, those things help, but they're, it's, sure. it's not, like, at the end of the day, like, it's like, uh, you know, we put 100 girls in a circle versus 100 boys, half a million dollar cash prize, build these crazy sets, all the effort. That's a big part of why it does well, right? Sure, we can tweak a little bit here and there and, and remove a pee joke so it's a little bit more watchable mm -hmm. and, and do this little thing. But at yeah. the end of the day, it's like, that's not why people are coming back and that's not what makes it great. That's just a little icing on top, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like the money is best spent in like just doing grander things that I find interesting that are unique, original, and like people just, how I would put it, can't find anywhere else. So you yeah. can't find what we do, for the most part. Some videos here and there, but for the most part, you can't find what we do anywhere else, yeah. at, not at the scale we do. And I think it's like, that is where I want to put the money in, because then that's what gets people coming back, they enjoy it, and then everything else benefits. Yeah. Do you know how much it costs in terms of running your overall business every month? Just like a ballpark number? Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> so, what, it's just a Mr. Beast channel, gaming, reacts, everything, Feastables, everything Beast under Burger. the umbrella. Oh gosh, uh, I mean, it could be a round number. I mean, yeah, because like, like even like yeah. so like Feastables is about to go into retail, and like even just that, like we just filled like a four million dollar purchase order, so we can buy enough bars to fill retail. Yeah. So you want me to slap that on there yeah, too? Slap it on. I mean, bro, who's calling me? This is like the intense moment. <laughs> Arex calling. Bro, hey, we're we're talking YouTube money. Go away. What are you talking Eric, about? Eric, I'm, I'm, yo, not right now, man. <laughs> How's it going? We're filming. It's Graham. It's Graham. Oh, Graham. <laughs> What's up, man? Hey, Graham, can you can, can you ask uh, Jimmy a question for me? What's the question? Can you ask? Is it worked out today? The answer is we're playing soccer right after this interview. More importantly, yeah. Eric, massive, so. Eric hey, tell them to subscribe. Hey, Eric, or... Eric. How much money do you make a year? It's making in the video. How many money? Um, wait, you cut out. What'd you say? How much money do you make a year? Oh, <laughs> uh, multiple millions. I don't oh. know the exact number. Oh my gosh! Wow, what a uh, what a rich snobby guy! Wow. I'm so abundantly grateful for all of my fans. <laughs> <laughs> it's to build the exposed, world. Exposed, Eric. Exposed. He's a millionaire. He just wants to How use it to make, make his pizza. Uh, uh, a lot. <laughs> okay. Well, I would say it, but now if I sit on the back and it, it sounds like I'm trying to be a dick. Um, okay. I, you gotta call mine out if you don't say how much money you make. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> tens of millions or something like that. Forbes said I made 54 million last year. Uh, okay, I gotta go. Later. All right, bye. Bye. Gosh, um, she's calling it the most crucial part. I know. All so, right. how much do we spend a year? So. Or in a month. Yeah, or sorry, in a month. So, the main channel. Uh, let me see. The main channel is probably, like on the gaming channel, we probably are spending like, 
I don't know, depends, like a couple hundred thousand a month, reacts a couple hundred thousand a month. The main channel now, probably like three or four million a month. Um, like Feastables is spending probably a million or so a month. Beast Burger, same thing. I mean, if you're including like marketing and stuff, a couple million a month. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we're probably spending like, <laughs> I, I haven't even done this math in a while, but yeah, frick, like it's probably seven or eight million dollars. I mean, even like our Beast uh, Philanthropy, our, our charity, you know, I put a lot of money into that so we can have food and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's getting pretty yeah. crazy. Who manages that? Um, well, if you go over there up those stairs, you'll see a little accounting team that I walk in and I go, I want to give 100 people $100,000. They go, you're crazy. And I'm like, good luck. <laughs> Do they make sure that money is like put aside just for you, like just in case nah. something happened? No? What, what, yeah. But the thing is, we have 100 million subscribers. Yeah. If, I, what, people have been saying that since I had a million subscribers. And I always just, re like, what's the, I don't want to say what's the worst that happened. I guess I get hit by a car, <laughs> yeah. but I mean. The videos get views even if I don't upload. So yeah. like if I really wanted to, I could just stop spending and just live off the money the, the views make, you yeah. know what I mean? Are you investing any of your own money separate from everything else? Like do you take any of it for yourself, put it off to the oh, side, no. invest I, it? I reinvest everything. I want to just literally all I want to do is make the best food as possible. Yeah. That's why I live in the studio right over there. So I don't, like I'm not worried about paying for a mansion. I don't drive a Lamborghini. Um, I purposely have a really like dumbed down lifestyle. So when, cause it gives you freedom. Like, you know, most people can't reinvest in a business because when they get to this level, they're worried about their $10 million mansion. They're like four or five cars and insurance and keeping up with that. And then like their second home and all these other things. I just cut it all out. I have no like personal debt or th like things, you know, that I have to pay for. So I can just go all in on the business. Cause it's like, it doesn't even matter, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Can you talk about maybe investing in NFTs or crypto if you, yeah. if you want to talk about that? I mean, what, no, I mean, yeah. literally all I do is I invest in my videos right now. So I, don't, I actually don't even do any investing on the side. Um, back in the day, you know, I, I bought a little bit of Bitcoin um, and did pretty good. But then I ended up just dumping it back into the videos. So. Yeah. Do you have a credit card? You would have to ask the team over there. <laughs> I, uh, I know I mentioned opening up my bank account earlier, yeah. but I don't even know the login to it. I don't, I don't know it. I just know, I, I see the YouTube check come in, and then at the end of the month, they just go, here's how much money you have, you're poor. And they're like, stop spending so much. And I go, okay, okay. And so if we looked at your personal bank account, would there be just like a few hundred bucks in there? No, no, it's not yeah. that bad. The yeah. thing is, you know, it's, it's my YouTube channel. If I want to, I can just pull money out. Yeah. So if, you know, if I needed, let's say we, we went to Vegas, like Ludwig invites me to a poker game. Like obviously in the buy-in, I think it was like 50 grand. Like obviously I'm just going to pull 50 grand out and go play in it. So it's not like yeah. I don't have access to capital if I need it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, you know, like in the last probably 20 days, I've only left this studio once. I just live here. Like I don't, I don't really need money for other things, you know? Cool. These are the more interesting questions that I'm personally interested in. How do you plan to expand the business? Ooh, that's where it gets fun. Oh boy, well, I think for starters, you know, I just wanna keep making the best videos possible. I have to reiterate, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but uh. everything I do stems from that. Because if I stop making the best videos, people stop watching, and then Feastables is irrelevant, Beast Burger is irrelevant, all the companies are just literally irrelevant. So that, and then stemming off from that, um, next I really wanna get into uh, making mobile games. I think that'd be a lot of fun because we have a gaming channel that gets like 20 million views a video. We did uh, the Finger on the App Challenge. We had 2 million concurrent players and I didn't even mention it in a video. That was just like on Twitter and Instagram. I think Jack tried it. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> yeah, but so that was kind of a case yeah. study. Like I can get millions of people to play a game. So I want to build mobile games. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, and then I really want to scale up Feastables, launch new products. We're going to launch cookies. And then next I want to do like, uh, well, I don't want to say what's after that, but <laughs> it's a, it'll be a great product. And then Beast Burger, we're getting into building physical locations. So in two weeks, we open our first physical Beast Burger. We have 2,000 virtual. We're building that. And then based on how that goes, I want to build 10 and then 50 and then 100 physical locations um, and just, you know, keep leveraging the brand. Do you think there could be a work-life balance? Yes. There, there, well, not if you want to grow as quick as we are. No. I mean, because at the end of the day, if I stop filming on the main channel, the video stopped going up. If I stopped filming on React, the video stopped going up. Beast Plans V, they stopped going up. TikTok, they stopped going up. Main, you know what I mean? So all that centers around me, and then all the side businesses center around me. But yeah, 
if I wanted to, I could just not build a snack brand. I could just not do a restaurant, and I could just not do a mobile game company, and I could just not do gaming, a gaming channel and a React channel, and I could just do my main channel. I'd probably be probably way happier and have way more free time, um, but that's just not who I am. And it sounds weird, but it's just ingrained in me. This, those are the things that like get me up and get me out of bed. And like when I don't do them, I'm depressed. So I like pushing myself, and I see it as a sport, and like going hard in business and, and building them, um, even though it's stressful and it's very difficult. And like sometimes I'm like, you know, you have a mental breakdown. You're like, why am I doing this? Why did I push myself so hard? Mm -hmm. But then when you're not doing it, you're just depressed. So it's like yeah. a weird system, a weird situation, but I love it. But yeah. sometimes I don't, and here I am. <laughs> do you ever get anxious randomly or just worried about oh, like- all the time. Yeah, because you're just like, oh, should I be working on this business? Is this the best use of my time? Should I be doing this? Blah, 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 this, blah, blah, that. Oh, 100%, yeah. How do you deal with that? I just, I just, you just do. I just right. keep on working. That's fair. <laughs> I'm yeah. not the best for advice right. like this. You guys should actually get advice from someone that's not a 24 year old <laughs> idiot that's only done, built businesses yeah. his entire life with no social skills. <laughs> do you think eventually you want a family and kids? And, or do that's you think That's an you... interesting question. Family and kids. So, yeah. Here's the thing, Elon has kids, Steve Jobs. Nine of them. <laughs> yes, he does. He, uh, Steve Jobs has kids, Bill Gates has kids, all these ultra successful people. Not that I want to be them or whatever, but in general, I just like view bu building business as a video game and you know, it's kind of fun. And so all these really successful people have kids. So I used to in the past be like, heck no, they're a waste of time. But then you see all these people who, you know, time's worth more money than anyone else in the world an hour of their time, but they justify it. and. You know, they say even the most obsessed people you can find still say it's, you know, having kids brings them the most joy in their life. So, um, yeah, it's just like the thought of, of, of devoting that much time to someone for at least 18 years is like so scary. And it's like opportunity cost wise, not optimal. But all these other successful people do it and they don't regret it. Like, I can't really find anyone who really has. So, I don't know. I'm kind of like in that weird area where I'm still trying to figure out, like, would it make me fulfilled? And, would that be the one thing where I could be, where you know, it takes me away from the business? Like if I raising someone and investing my life in a mini version of me and programming its brain to be a little genius, is that something I would enjoy enough where I would wouldn't mind basically setting aside 18 years of my life from the business? You know, what do you worry about? Is there anything that goes through your mind where? No, I'm not really a, that kind of person. Anything that's out of your control, it's kind of a waste of your time to worry about. You know what I mean? So if it's in your control, fix it. If not. Make a mental note and move on. Cool. This is an interesting one. What's your biggest insecurity? Biggest insecurity? Well, right now, you know, we're putting all these monies into these videos, and um, I, I would say, like, storytelling, I, I love storytelling, but, like, our videos are very fast-paced, and so sometimes you do have to give up a little bit of the story to, in, in order to keep the videos moving. And I, was, I, was, I feel like I'm a pretty good storyteller, but... I've always taken pride in that, but especially more recently, like a lot of people say, like, oh, the videos are too quick, or Mr. Beast just isn't a great storyteller. He's just good at making things move fast and spending money. And, uh, you know, that stuff, you, you, I ignore it, so it doesn't matter. But I guess of, of anything, it would be that. Like, a lot of people think the only reason we get views is because I just throw money at it, and they don't realize that, you know, we spent a decade just studying what does well, um, you know, studying, um, figuring out our own style, figuring out our own way to do things, and the amount of hours I put into like just expanding the inspiration in my brain just so I can come up with original ideas, and the, like the months on months we spend building the sets and working on it, and the weeks we spend editing, and all this, and then, you know, they're just like, oh, that, he just spent money, that's it. That's, there's nothing special, you know what I mean? Is there anything that you think that I didn't ask that you think the audience would want to hear, or that you want to share? Because this yeah. is more finance, business oriented. Of course. And so it's a different audience that I feel like could, you could share something that maybe they're not, that they didn't think of, or that you feel like more I people should know. YouTube, I've said this before, but maybe because your audience might not have listened to me before, I think YouTube is only going to grow bigger and bigger because it comes pre-installed on the Android. You know, Google funnels people to it. Alphabet owns all this. So ev almost every area of the internet points to YouTube. So I think YouTube is going to keep growing and at least like the next five to 10 years. I think it's going to, like in 10 years, YouTube is going to be bigger than television ever was for culture in America, at least in my opinion. And so I think a lot of people underestimate that. And people, I don't think people really understand just how like to be a, one of the top creators on the biggest social media platform 
and that and that will also be the biggest in 10 years during that whole time like the amount of value and how crazy that is like you don't need a network you don't need um you know to go through people you just are you can mm -hmm. and you can do whatever you want and you can influence people how you want it's just wild it's mind-blowing and you can leverage that to build businesses or you know like do things like beast philanthropy or whatever i think like people don't realize just how crazy it is that you have um I don't even know where I'm going with it, but yeah. like, you know, how much influence the top YouTube channels have. Like, for us, we have a hundred million people on average that watch almost everything we put up. You know, if you include non English and yeah. English, everything we do, a hundred million people will watch. When? When has someone else ever had that kind of power without having to go through a network or anything? I can just upload whatever yeah. I want. I could upload a black screen, you know what I mean? Yeah. And hit tens of millions of people. It's crazy. Does that ever worry you that you have that much influence on so many people? Mm, no. I think we're, you know, we, we did Team Trees, we yeah. did Team Cs. Typically, our stuff centers around doing good. And um, now, actually, it excites me because, uh, especially like on our Beast Philanthropy channel, where, so we started a, a food pantry, a charity, 501C, so. and we, we make videos around it, and we use the money from those videos to fund the charity. And I cover all the costs of the videos, so it's 100% profit that goes into the charity, which is a nonprofit. Uh, which is a huge cash thing. Mm -hmm. um, but that channel alone, like, I've had hundreds of parents, probably even a thousand at this point, that I meet in a Walmart or I meet out or whatever, just tell me stories of like, their kids watch that and then when they get tooth fairy money, they want to go donate to charity. Or like their little 12 year old kid wants to go volunteer so cool. because they watched a Peace Philanthropy video, um, et cetera. And I see thousands of tweets, maybe not thousands, hundreds of tweets like that a day. And so, no, I, I feel like we're doing a good job in inspiring people to, to care. And, you know, um, yeah, maybe it could be perfect, but in general, I feel like compared to other stuff, we're doing a pretty good job. Who do you look up to the most? Who do I look up to the most? I mean, I think yeah. Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates. Yeah, the thing is, yeah. you got to do a caveat with them. Because sure. Steve, you know, uh, as inspiring as he is, was a little bit of a an asshole. Yeah. yeah, and so I think this is the thing that I don't think everyone understands. You can look up to someone without idolizing everything they do. There's never been a perfect human on this earth. Anyone, I don't care. You could pick anyone you look up to. Someone could find something wrong and be like, Graham, why do you look up to them? One time they lied. You know what I mean? Anyone, it doesn't yeah. matter who they are. So I, I do look up to Steve, but I, I actually think like if he was nicer, I think he would have been more successful, to be honest. Like I don't, I don't think him being mean to his employees and so ruthless is why he was so successful. So that out the way, yes, it's definitely Steve Jobs. Um, his just unrelenting passion with making the best product ever. This is the yeah. number one product in the history of mankind. There's never been a higher grossing product ever that's created by someone, the iPhone. Yeah. Billions, right, have been sold. It's wild. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, it's just his unrelenting focus on an obsession of making the best product possible, not conceding, quality. I love that he also left Apple, became a billionaire at Pixar, and you know, was just such a creative genius that he could make help, obviously he didn't do it all, but help make Toy Story and all those other films. And that's actually how he became a billionaire. Yeah. And then Apple had to buy Next just to bring him back, and you literally can see it, right? When he comes back, it takes off. Obviously he had the secret sauce and he knew what he was doing, and the fact that when he came back, he cut all the products. So inspiring, just a laser-like focus and obsession. And it's just kind of what I aim to like implement in our videos, because it's, yeah, it's just beautiful to see. How do I get people to subscribe who are watching this right now? How do I convince them? Well, the easiest thing is just to tell them, right? If you upload a video, let's say that gets a million views, yeah. and you don't say to subscribe, you might on average get a couple thousand. But if you go, hey, you should subscribe right now, that, you know, a lot of people who wouldn't have done it because they just didn't think of it are now thinking about it, and it will convert to like 10 or 20,000. So literally just say it, and you're good. Jack. I think has a few things he wants to ask you. Okay, okay. so yeah. you always say you want to make the best video possible. Okay. By best, what exactly do you mean? Do you mean strictly just views? No, it's literally just whatever makes the audience happiest. That uh, You could interchange it. Whatever makes the viewer happy. When you click on a video, I want to give you a, whatever emotion we're trying to convey. If it's like helping people and we're trying to make you be like, oh, or like t intensity when I'm running from the FBI, whatever that is, I just want to make it as good of a viewing experience as possible. Now, question for you. What if you could reach 500 million people that see that video that are yeah. moderately happy, or you get 50 million people who are really happy who watch that video? <laughs> oh, gosh. I've never had someone ask me that before. Reach a smaller, dedicated 500. Not, I mean, the thing is, if you're reaching 500 million people, naturally there's going to be a 10% subsection of it that 
is really sure. happy. So I would just pick the 500 million. <laughs> so the larger number, assuming that of the larger number is smaller. Of course, because you be... don't get the larger numbers without building dedicated fan base. But yeah, yeah. no matter what, like if you get a million views a video, not all million are hardcore fans, but there are going to be hardcore fans as a subsection. And the bigger the gross number, yeah. assuming the content doesn't suck, the bigger the dedicated. Would you ever do a vlog of uh, just behind the scenes just I kind of did day? when I didn't eat for uh, 30 days. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of it. Obviously, I cut out a lot of my life, yeah. but yeah. I've noticed, by the way, I think that was the only video that didn't go on trending. Um, you, I didn't even notice, but you're yep. right, it did. I check every single one of your videos. Because really? I, I notice always within six to 12 hours, it's number one on trending. Interesting. When you posted that video, I was like, oh crap. How is YouTube going to respond to that? Do you because, know how much yeah. number one trending? Oh gosh, well YouTube hates me. Do you know how much number one trending for a day Very gets your views? How many? Uh, wait, how many in terms of a percentage? So like, if you get number one trending on YouTube and it sits there for like half a day, how many views do you think you'll get? Um, I was number two okay. once, and I noticed the view changed by about ten percent. Okay, it so, wasn't much. Well, I can tell you because yeah. I mean we've had hundreds of videos. Yeah. Like, like what the median view is. Yeah, it's around a million views. Is that's the change? Yeah, that's just what you'll get. You know, from when you go on trending to when you fall off, if you get up to number one, it's like a million views. But for you, I mean, that would be uh, it's not a one and a half percent, two percent. Uh, yeah, but the thing is that's great, is, and this is why I do like it, please keep giving me it, yeah. or whoever, um, uh, is it's a lot of new viewers. So it's not your typical people who've seen it. So what you'll see is they come in, they watch a video, and then you can search their username like at two hours later. So they'll be like, Oh, I've never seen your channel before. I just yeah. found it on trending. And then like two, three hours later, search your name again and they'll be like, I just watched 20 videos. I didn't know this existed. Like, how do you give away this? What, what is this channel? This is crazy. Yeah. And so that's what, that's why I like things like, like even your audience, like doing this. Not that this is why I'm doing mm -hmm. it. You're just a cool guy and it's fun to hang out with you. But like, you'll bring people over and a viewer from you is like better than like 10 of my viewers coming back because your guy hasn't seen our channel before. So he might go watch 100 videos, yeah. whereas the 10 coming back might only watch one or two because they've seen the rest. Does yeah. that make sense? I love yeah. that video, by the way, but when I saw it, I was so worried that YouTube wouldn't want to recommend it yeah. because they would be worried about people imitating that and be like, well, I'm not going to eat now for 31 well, but days. That's, yeah. We had tons of disclaimers yeah. and we had a doctor throughout yeah. it. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, honestly, the retention on it wasn't as good as normal. So mm -hmm. the video's not doing as well, but I think I just didn't... I had never done a long vlog like that. And the problem is after like day nine, I just stopped filming as much because I was so <laughs> hungry and I just was so tired that like day nine to like 14, there was no footage. And like even like day six, I just didn't record it. I was just like, good morning. And that was like all I had. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that if I could do it over again, I would have just vlogged better. And yeah. I think I could have made the video. Vlogging like 10 times is better. really difficult. We wanted to vlog some of the trip, and we vlogged the first night like really well. And you then, just forget. Yeah, exactly. There's other stuff but, that goes on. Yeah, yeah. you just. Yeah. But I don't want to film in the moment. Like when you're in there, you don't want to be. Oh wait, wait really exactly. quick. Exactly. Take it yeah. your phone. It just it ruins it. So yeah. I get that. But I think if you were to do some sort of personal vlog, just from your own standpoint, with no one else around, just you holding a camera. Yep. People would love that and get to know you oh, behind Oh, I 100% the... agreed. Yeah. My only problem is then I'd show the behind the scenes of this operation a lot, and I think we talked about this on the main channel video we did for you, is people just copy everything I do. And I'm like, I don't, I'm trying, like I'm trying to like tell these other people who, like people call Mr. Beast clones, like take inspiration, but don't just copy. Yeah. And people would to a T just do what I do every day, and there'd just be like 30 of me running around, yeah. little me's, that just don't put as much time in or, money in because they just think fast cuts is yeah. all we do and you know. Do you ever worry about, I watched a video, it's called the Mr. Beastification of YouTube. Mm -hmm. Did you see this video? Yeah, actually I reached out to him and really? talked to him. Yeah, he was really cool. It was so entertaining. It was a 40 minute long video yeah. and I love this guy's analytics of how he broke it down. Do you ever worry that, that it's going to get too saturated? Now I know you could always one up yeah. and you could always make the videos better, but do you worry that that style is is, I don't want to say outplayed, but too many people are doing it, it's becoming too common, and now you have to change to adapt. The only thing is, no one's doing it at our scale, uh, with our creativity, our originality, our effort. Like most of these people, they literally think, the only thing that makes my videos good is that I just <laughs> cut them quick, and they're just like, cut, 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 and they think that's that's why we get 100 yeah. million views a video. They don't, you know, they don't, they don't spend months, you know, thinking of ideas, and like I talked about before, like, you know, studying new things so you can get better inspiration so you can come up with more original ideas and you know sometimes we work on videos for six to eight months and all that time and effort we put into it and 
our average video is around $1.2 million right now. And so the money, and then we usually, sometimes like the hotel video, we're gonna be filming for two weeks straight. So all that production time, all that money, all that effort, all the time on the front end with the originality, and then we spend weeks editing it across, you know, seven to 10 revisions. Like that's why the videos do well. Not because we just go cut, 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 and I just throw money, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, and so, no, because the Mr. Beastification, uh, which by the way, I love the video, and he was actually really nice. Yeah. I reached out to him, he's, he's a really great guy. But um, no, th none of them do it right. Like they usually copy like one or two aspects, but we're still the only place where you can get the full picture, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Do you think that the current style of content that you're producing right now is gonna be able to last forever, like the massive spectacle type mm -hmm. content? Because YouTube kind of goes through the ebb and flow of like maybe this style of content's performing well and now this style. Do yeah. you think that the current style is gonna last a long time? No, I don't think like just uh, what we're currently doing is gonna be relevant forever. But that's the beauty because we just adapt and innovate. I'm not hard set on anything. I just mm -hmm. love creating, you know what I mean? So like I used to do these videos where I donate to Twitch streamers. Like, I would just go mm -hmm. open up their random Twitch streams I donate 10 grand and say nothing and then just watch them freak out. Mm -hmm. People loved it. We did like 12 of those. They all went super viral. Very like they were getting tons of views. People were begging for more, but you know, I was like 12's enough. There's plenty. That's like 2 hours of content. Like you don't really need that many more. And so I pivoted and I stopped doing them even though people wanted them. And then I started doing last sleeps. People love that. They're like, mm -hmm. "Oh, never mind. Forget the Twitch stuff. This is cool." And we did a bunch of those. And now I occasionally do them when I come up with a really big idea. And you know, and then we the thing is like you, the getting hunted by FBI. Did you see that one and the bounty hunter and stuff? And then I pivoted into that. You just always pivot and change it up. I'm not hard set on anything. The content I'll be making in five years is different than the content I'm making now. And the content I'm making now is different than the content I made a year ago and a year ago and a year ago. And it's always gonna change. I think that's how you stay relevant. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, I think Ryan Trahan really threw a curveball with yes. YouTube and his 30 day penny series. I started watching, I think around day 12. Yeah. Never watched it before in my life, but starting day 12, I watched every single video. I couldn't so tell good. you what was so special about it, but just seeing his firsthand experience, and, he, and him spending no money. And yeah. I think I appreciated that, that like anybody could do this if they really 100%. wanted to. 100%, there, so two things like that. There are tons of viral ideas that people can do that don't require money. It does not require money to go viral. Like at one point, one of my most few videos was like spending um, 24 hours in a desert. We just grabbed a tent and some stuff and we went in the desert and it got like 60, 70 million views. I have so many videos where we spent hardly any money, like the uh, no food one or uh, I'd have to pull up the channel and go through it, that have gotten tens of millions of views and they would have gotten 10 plus million views even on a small channel. So people who say, oh, well, I could be Mr. Beast if I had money. Well, A, I didn't start off with money. I was poor. I had no money. And it took me like seven years just to buy a camera, saving up from YouTube. And B, some of our most few videos, literally, like anyone could do. Like, you know, maybe spend a little bit less on a tent, but still, it's not that expensive. Yeah. But back to the Ryan thing, I agree. I think what Ryan did was like, remember, in the, there used to be like the Logan Pauls and the Casey's and all these vloggers, but vlogging died because it was repetitive, boring, and to be honest, like, there's only so much interesting stuff you can do in a 24-hour period, and if you have to do that every day, it's just like almost impossible to like make it interesting. So that kind of died off, um, and then you kind of have like the rise of what we have and like spectacles and and just cool things that people go, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Um, and so he kind of blended it together. He was the first person I've ever seen that made what I call modern vlogging. Like he took the old format of vlogging that people used to love. Like Casey would get millions of views of video. Logan would get millions of views of video. Jake you know, um, Romanat would go down the list. So clearly there's an innate reason we liked vlogging before it got stale. So he found the way to do vlogging, but with an overarching goal that makes it interesting. So now, and then like the great reset, you don't know if next video he's gonna get started back to zero. Uh, you know, he has to literally make the money to buy the plane ticket to then make money to live off of and sleep. And so it's also very interesting, engaging. So there's like an overarching through story it's like each video is interesting. You don't know if he's gonna restart, if he's gonna be able to feed himself, and there's a giant payoff at the end. There's an incentive to keep watching him coming here and surprising me. So that is what I would call modern vlogging, and he's the first person to kind of crack the code. The only thing is, I don't know, which is why I'm excited to see his next series and his next one, I don't know how you keep like, I'm, you know, keep doing that over and over again. A big part of it is very taxing on him, because it revolves yeah. around him, and I'm super curious to see what the next one is. How strategic is it for you to bring on your friends? 
Ooh, like Chris Chandler Carl in them. Yeah, this is Jack's. Jack. Yeah, I, Jack yeah. gets okay, credit so, for this. Or Jack brought that up. Like, oh wow, that, that is interesting. I was just curious because in the beginning it was mainly just you, and then you know obviously yep. like brought on Chris, and then from there you went to just basically your own your own friend group, and yeah. then from there now you're just doing a bunch of random people. Is there any reason from this like gradual change from just you into like a group of people that you? Well, don't it even depends. Know? So you're talking about like the core boys that are in every video or are you talking about the contestants? Uh, I feel like a lot of the time the videos now they include the contestants or just like a lot of yes, other Yes, but the people. thing mm -hmm. is the, the people, the only people that are consistent in every video are Nolan, Carl, Chris, Chandler and mm -hmm. like so those guys are there just because we're friends and because mm -hmm. we, the sheer, like the hotels, we're about to yeah. be flying around the world for two weeks like we would go crazy you know um, so it's like the we don't cast and you know churn through a thousand different people and blah blah. blah. It's literally just like if Chris went out and got a new best friend today, they'd probably start popping in the videos. It's just <laughs> kind of how it works. Uh, assuming they also get along well with Carl and Chandler and and uh, me. So like it was just me and Chris at the start, and then uh, who was it? and then Chandler was our janitor, and Chris and Chandler just occasionally hung out and like uh, and so then I was like okay. I'll, Chandler's his friends. So we put Chandler <laughs> in the video, and the fans loved them, and yeah. he, you know, um, and he got along well with us. And there you go. Now it's me, Chris, and Chandler, and then Carl was one of our editors, and then uh, Chris and him just became inseparable. That's funny. That's how Chris is the hardest person to find friends for. Yeah. So if someone hits it off with Chris and they actually like like hanging out, then I'm like, yes, we struck gold because it's pretty easy for everyone else to like them. And so they started becoming friends, and so then we were just like Chris just didn't want to film unless Carl was holding the camera huh. and eventually I was just like okay well, we just put him on camera and it was great the audience loved him it turned out well and then Nolan's just been a, a friend of mine for like five years like as long as they're friends with everyone I think that natural camaraderie and just flow just shows on camera and I think that's the most important thing because you can't fake friendship you know what I mean Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. I know you spoke a lot about scrapping your videos, and you said this on like a lot of different podcasts. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering, are there any recent video ideas that you've scrapped? Oh boy. The problem is, our videos are getting so expensive, and mm -hmm. I I reinvest so much of the money that I can't afford scraps <laughs> like I used to. It's a lot easier to wow. scrap a hundred thousand dollar video than a two to three million dollar video. Yeah, yeah. But like the island video, for example, we went out there, d did like got the 100 contestants down there, terraformed the island, went to film it. It was, just, it was terrible. Like, there's a lot of bottlenecks, like, you know, importing stuff to the Bahamas. There was problems there. The pier got ripped away because of waves. I didn't like the way certain parts of the island, so we had to move a couple hundred trees so it looked better on the beach scene. And so we ended up not filming it, but we spent, like, $2 million, like, doing it all. And then, um, yeah, and then we ended up going back a month later because we just needed way more time to terraform the island. Mm -hmm. So usually now the videos are so big that... It, if I scrap it, we just refilm it later. But most of the money, it sucks because most of the money you don't really recoup. So it's like, whatever. I'm trying to really get it down because it's brutal, like losing a million or two million dollars. Wow. And all of the videos that you have scrapped in the past, do you think that there would be any good reason to post those on YouTube, even if it's on a different channel, so you don't want to post on Ludwig. any channel? Yeah, Ludwig yeah, channel. Like, I saw yes. that. It's Ludwig's that was most viewed video. Unexpected. I was watching his videos like, wait, what? <laughs> That is cool. Yeah. Because it's like a little Easter egg. That's probably, if yeah. I scrap a video in the future, I'll probably just auction it off. Or really? like Or upload it on someone else's channel. I mean, yeah, I could upload it on Mr. Beast too and make a little money, but I don't know. I feel like it's funnier to upload it on Ludwig's channel. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I watched it. I mean, it. I lost a million dollars, yeah. but hey, at least we got a funny joke. Gosh, that's cool. Do you ever feel imposter syndrome with all of your success? Sometimes, like, maybe you weren't deserving of it or anything? Uh-huh. Imposter syndrome. So I think I did at one point. Like, it's still, if I walk in a Walmart and like 30 people follow me around, I'm like, oh, feel, or you, and the weird, when I feel that, actually, the only time I really feel it is like when we get a make a wish, because mm -hmm. now that we're really starting to get big, we get those quite a bit. And I, I'm like, of all the people on the planet, like, why me? You know what I mean? And so I, I tell them, like, don't give them, give them their wish back. Like, I'll, I'll send them a video saying hi and, you know, talking to them or whatever, but don't waste their fucking wish on me. I, that makes me feel horrible. Um, so I guess in that sense, I kind of feel it. I want to get your advice from me. I feel like uh, I've kind of tapped out in terms of what I could do on YouTube. I okay. know there's something bigger. I don't know what it is yet, but YouTube is going so well with everything that I don't want to stop what I'm currently doing. Yep. But I don't feel the same passion as I did Oh, three boy. years ago, okay. but it's going so well. So when you look at the numbers, everything is the, the best it's, it's been. But I feel like there's something else. I, I 
don't know what that is, and I'm having trouble finding that. So your flame's going out a little bit. It is, but I want to continue with the same path that I have. Well, I mean, the answer is you just got to take risks, like yeah. whatever it is that... You got to take calculated risks that you're confident in, just like, you know, for me, like the analogy I said before, when we did all those Twitch donation videos, it was getting tons of views, but I just knew, like, this will get stale, I'm going to jump ship before it gets stale, and I'm just going to do the next best thing. I mean, you just you have to be a little bit of a visionary and, and figure out what's the next evolution of it. I think you should do something where, like, I think we talked about this like a year ago. You should um, like get a hundred thousand dollars from me and then like invest it, and then we do a video together in a year to see if you made me money or not. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. Or uh, you know, maybe you get a bunch of other financial channels together and you each like take a hundred grand, you all invest it, and then you lock it and then you see who made the most in a year and you all get together, that would be like a next level Super Bowl type collab. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you and the five other biggest financial channels did that, and it was like a competition, and whoever made the most got all the money. <laughs> like That's the kind yeah, of stuff that you would sure. probably enjoy. Your audience would love. It'd get tons of people talking, cross promotion, every way, it's probably a win. Could mm -hmm. you imagine if you did that? I'm worried that the audience really cares about up-to-date news and like quick stuff that they wouldn't have the attention span to watch. Yeah, I think you're crazy. Like I think really? if you got you and the four other biggest, or maybe three other biggest financial YouTubers, <laughs> you each made a video on your channels, you're like, okay, we're each, you have the cash, we're each taking a hundred grand, we're gonna, we can invest in whatever we want, and then we're gonna get the, uh, we're gonna, whoever investment is worth the most in a year, gets the, all yeah. the money from everyone. And then you each made videos on it, and you made a public website where people could track the portfolios of all four of you, and then in a year, you all make follow-up videos about your yeah. portfolios and who won. It, Bro, it, tell me yeah. that's not good. It sucks. Is that not good? It sucks I think it's because, a great idea. Well, I also told him to do in-real-life Monopoly with the other finance creators. He didn't want to do that either. Uh, in my real-life Monopoly, I don't know if that will hit, but I think... Because it's slow? Well, it's just like it's a little childish and that I could see like his like the I 50 year old dad watching I, your channel yeah. wouldn't care about I that. I invested 100 grand with a stock picking monkey who picked stocks randomly it was my worst performing video let me see this thumbnail I don't know you're not we spent like a it. lot of time on this thumbnail no. he's just gonna, <laughs> gonna, he's gonna hate it type, in, it to parts, type in grown Stefan stock picking monkey you're probably gonna hate it picking monkey monkey I'm worried we spent so long on this thumbnail and it bombed and by the way on that I changed the title thumbnail multiple times and everything I did failed. Everything. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I spent $100,000 on a stock picking monkey. That just doesn't even make sense, right? Like, if, if I say I built the world's largest firework, you can, or I launched the world's largest firework, you can envision that. I don't even, like, I spent $100,000 on a stock. What is a stock picking monkey? It's not we, clear. We, yeah, we. Neither, we don't get it either. <laughs> we were That's trying like, so hard well, to clickbait, it. it didn't even make so sense. So how would you do that? I, mean, I, I would I, title I, it instead, like, I would have done a, it, but it starts with the idea. You you just fucked yourself. You just picked an idea that's hard to convey in a title and thumbnail. Correct. I would have done something like, I I blindfolded myself and picked, uh, I invested a million dollars into random companies, or something like blindfolding myself and picking investments with darts, right? Or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would have to think on it for a couple of weeks, but I could come up with something. But if you could convey to the viewer that you blindfolded yourself and threw darts at investments and you put a million dollars in those investments, yeah. they would click. You know I'll, what I mean? I'll tell you my idea that I really want to do at some point. It's what we did today. I think that's the next thing. I, I don't know if I want this included because I know everyone would copy Interviewing it, other creators. But this, uh, what I did with Pokimane. Stradman, Michael Reeves, Michael Reeves yeah. uh, Kevin O'Leary, all of those videos got at least a million views. Yep. And people loved them. And did you see the and studio tour I did with Mr. Who's the Boss? I did. Yeah. yeah. I think the demand for that kind of content is crazy. Yeah. Truth be told, I told Colin and Samir the same thing. What we're doing here is what I'm telling Colin and Samir they should be doing with all other creators. Yeah. So I would agree. Like, it's a no brainer. Like, it's, basically the top 100 creators, like no one yeah. really interviews them. I think that or just business people. Like Kevin O'Leary was so interesting in terms of like yes. how he invests and like stuff like that, but like a 15 minute deep dive. you got one dive. with Andrew Tate where you just asked him what he invested. Oh, That's gosh. what I've been telling him. He doesn't want to have I think Andrew. It's I think it's he too risky. He offered to come on the podcast, but Graham didn't want to. Really? We, we have to go yeah. to Croatia. I thought it was too risky and I didn't want him to say something that a brand might not like. Just cut it. But then where's where's the, the uh, that's I feel like what's what's then People want to see Bro, if you just went on there and you were like, Andrew, how do you make your money? And you just let him talk, bro, that would have popped. It's not it's you gonna... that's saying the things. I know, but I'm worried that, that I'm giving him a platform while he says something that might reflect okay, well, poorly. The, pivot you know? from Andrew Tate. Yeah. Pick anyone, like yes. LeBron. If you could get Rebron, LeBron Shaq. in a room, Shaq, Shaq and you're just like, be. how do you make money? What are your investments? Banger. Like those 
what is it, GQ or whatever? Ones yeah. Where, yeah, my like, first million. Yeah, do yeah. that, but just do their investment portfolios. Huge series. You already know the answer. Yeah. Yes, obviously, those are bangers. That's no one's I doing think. them. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for coming out to the iced coffee. Don't forget to subscribe come, and like. Subscribe yeah. and le- why like? Likes are relevant. Uh, I don't if, know. If I he think ever it, I think says it like be... again, tweet at him and tell him to stop. No. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. I got to like the video. <laughs> cool. Thanks, man. No problem. That was yeah. good. Uh,